Great. Uh, thanks for coming to my party. Uh, of course, this party is about Android Wear, uh, if it weren't uh, from the dead giveaway in the name. Um, my name is Paula Mertzma. I am CTO at a small company here uh, nearby in Utrecht, uh, where we do apps, uh, apps and embedded systems, that sort of thing. Um, also mentioned by Mike Lee in the beginning, there is also an uh, Android user group here. I'm one of the co-organizers together with uh, uh, Hugo Fisser and uh, Dennis Kurtz uh, sitting here in the front. Yay. <laughs> Android user group represent. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, if you want to check out um, our stand, we're upstairs in the uh, community lab. Uh, drop by, ask us any questions. We also have some Android Wear devices for you to play with, so uh, feel free to take a look. So, Android Wear. Uh, who here has an Android Wear device? I see all sorts of wrists going up in the air. That's great. So, there are about like five, six, maybe or something like that. Who here knows about Android Wear devices? A whole lot more. Cool. So these three devices here are the originals. These were launched exactly a year ago, um, or announced exactly a year ago, and they launched with Google I.O. 2014. Uh, it's a Samsung on the left, uh, the LG G Watch, Motorola uh, Moto 360, which, a, uh, which, which featured the uh, very novel round watch face, which we hadn't seen in any smartwatches uh, before. Um, and this was last year, so where are we now? Uh, we have loads more. Um, actually, this one right here uh, is a new one, was launched at Mobile World Congress. That's a, a Huawei one. So uh, pretty exciting, lots of new and actually pretty decently looking watches nowadays, so that looks quite nice. I'm, I'm, I'm actually happy to see that it's not looking as much as a gadgety thing, but more of a fashion thing, so it's pretty cool. So let me just show you really briefly what it's like to use it from a user experience. Um, here I've recorded my own wrist uh, to show you kind of how it comes alive. So it's a, a typical, um, you just rotate it, the little watch face comes alive, and uh, it begins to, uh, to respond to user input and whatever. It, normally it'll be in an ambient state. Like if you're looking at it on my wrist right now, it is in a low power state, it's ambient mode. Not all devices support this, some of them just show a black screen or something like that. Um, when you tap on it or when you, uh, uh, when you to rotate your wrist, it'll come alive, the watch face will illuminate, and if you have any sort of notifications or anything to be displayed, it will show a, a card, something like this. So here we're looking at a, a card from, Andro uh, from Google Fit, and there's another one from Weather, and that's the only two cards I have on my watch face at the moment. So there's a two, and you can also pull it down to make it go away. So let's take a closer look at one of those, one of those cards. Um, what happens if you interact with a card is you can swipe it to the, to, swipe it to the left and you'll see more pages of information. So, so Google Fit is telling me that I got a whopping 40, 24 minutes of exercise today, uh, which is actually quite a bit. It's actually the two minutes of running to the bus that really, uh, really made it happen for me today. Um, it shows you a little bit more information of how that 26 minutes actually adds up. And you can keep on swiping. Here you'll see another page. Um, showing how far I am to my extremely ambitious goal of one hour of movement. Most of that is, by the way, walking up and down to the coffee machine. Um, and if you keep on swiping, you'll eventually reach um, actions. And these are actually actions very similar to the way that you interact with notifications on your phone. Uh, for instance, going to your history, um, so your Google Fit history, showing your heart rate, or Two actions here are especially reserved ones. This one is to open Android, uh, open Google Fit on your phone, or to block the app from showing any notifications on your watch face if you're not really into that kind of thing. So let's take a look at actually opening one of those uh, one of those actions. So I'll swipe back to the history and I'll tap on that. And this is actually where an Android Wear app opens. So we're now actually looking at an Android Wear app. Uh, it's showing me the history of my non-activity for the past few days. Oh, yesterday actually zero minutes. That's great. Okay, and you can actually swipe here. There are multiple pages. Uh, it can do a heart rate um, uh, measurement. Uh, again, an option to open on the phone, and it actually opened the second page. So there's a first page here that's showing me again the uh, the number of minutes towards my goal. Um, and this is kind of weird because now we're in an app. And conventionally, especially from an Android developer perspective, I'm thinking, well, how do I get out of this app? There's no home button. There's no back button. Um, all of the ye oldie uh, uh, smartwatches, they would have some sort of interaction, like a back button or something like that. There's no such thing here. Um, what they've basically come up with is uh, you swipe the app to the right, and it, uh, it just dismisses it. And you're back to where you were left off in your notification. And you can keep on swiping back to the left 
or uh, swiping to the right, I think you are, you're moving left, until you get to the notification itself, and you can pull that down, and you're looking at a watch face again. And under different scenarios, the uh, watch will go back into ambient mode, um, typically out of non-activity. You can also um, interact with it in a particular way by putting your hand, making a hand gesture to like a palm, a palm touch, and it will uh, dim and it will return back into its ambient state. So, so yeah, this is really basically the 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 uh, from a user's perspective how how if you were to buy one, what your experience would be, and it's really easy because you can just basically buy one, pair it with your device, and you're good to go. Um, but I'd like to take a step back and and, and focus on something that uh, that Google did when developing the original um, concept in their uh, what they call the creative vision, and the creative vision that they had really consisted of four primary aspects that they said were important in uh, creating a great uh, a great experience on Android Wear, and I'll, I'll go through them in a little bit of detail. I won't spend too much time. I really want to get more into the coding part of it, um, but I do want to emphasize that it's that these are important. So launching automatically, making your uh, making your interactions glanceable. Uh, it's all about support and demand. Uh, a suggest and demand, and you have to have very little interaction with the wa watch itself. So, what does that mean? Well, if we're talking about launching automatically, uh, it, it should be important that your cards, whatever card is pops up, whether it's a notification or something that you think is relevant to the user, that it's relevant at that time. So, you don't want to spam your user with things that aren't important. You really want to make sure that it's it's something timely, relevant, and specific to what the user is doing. So, for instance, if you're fixing to leave the office, maybe you want to know how how far, uh, what the traffic is uh, going home. Uh, again, on the same topic of, note of, of uh, navigations, for instance, uh, making it glanceable. Uh, if you're navigating on your way, you just want to take a quick glance. What's the next turn? You don't want to see the entire uh, navigation, every turn by turn, uh, every turn along the way. So it has to be fast and it has to be it has to be sharp. It has to be intelligent enough to understand you're about to take a turn. This is the next turn that's relevant to what you're doing. And by suggest and demand, we're talking about only interrupt the user when it's really necessary. Uh, y you know, it has to be helpful. Uh, when the user wants to input something, you have to be at the ready. So you can just say, OK, Google, and it'll respond. Um, it actually didn't, but uh, it would otherwise uh, respond, OK, Google, you know, put some input, uh, send a text to whatever, and then it'll send the text for you. So uh, always at hand, on hand, literally, um, to provide you with some sort of answer. And finally, um, and I actually think this one's the most important one, little interaction. Uh, old smartwatches really would have complex UIs, lots of things, lots of buttons, very fidgety. Um, keep it simple. I mean, you, you, you're on a wrist. It's already in hand. You only have one hand to your disposal. It's an extremely small screen. Hopefully, I'm actually hoping to see even smaller screens in the future because I have very small wrists. Um, so gestural, simple, and again, you know, you want to keep it fast. So in this particular example, we're seeing Google Play Music just has a pause button. So that's basically the design part about it. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's under the hood. Um, it is Android Wear. That means it's Android. Uh, and the cool thing is it's running the latest of the latest. It's running Android Lollipop. All of the versions, all the phones, uh, sorry, all the, the watches out there at the moment are actually sporting the latest Android 5.0. Um, and even though they're from different manufacturers, so you have the Samsungs, the LGs, and Huawei's now, uh, they all have the same unified Android Wear experience. There's nothing changed about that. So you don't have to worry about manufacturer branding and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I see the yes in the front. Um, exactly, yeah, that was my response too. Um, and the Wear, the, the Wear apps on there are specifically designed for Wear, so you'll have a good experience. Uh, they're designed with those design uh, uh, principles in mind from the Creative Vision. Uh, but the thing about it is you don't need to go hunting for those apps. And I'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, you, but you should remember it's, it's, a, it's a companion to your existing device. It's not a replacement for your watch or uh, for your phone or for your tablet. It's, it's, it's a companion, and basically, it's connected to your tablet or your phone, and it's using that as a portal to the internet. So all of your notifications that come in through your device, they show up on your watch. Um, there are apps that just magically work. I mean, all of the notifications will just basically pop up on your watch. So it's it's basically an experience that you'll have that, oh, well, I didn't have to set up anything. I'm, I'm basically done. It, it, my experience is great. That's the nice part about it. So. 
I really consider the, the, the party about where is not all of this stuff, all of this design and all of the user experience stuff. For me, it's really the technical stuff. So I'm going to stop with the pretty pictures and all that. And we're, we're actually going to take a look at making watch faces, showing notifications, and actually making these, these Wear apps. So let's start off with like actually making some watch faces. Um, there are lots and lots of them out there. In, the, in all the present and all the slides so far, I just showed some really simple digital watch face, uh, which is Muzai, by the way, which works excellently on the Android Wear. Um, but you can basically make anything you want. And there's an entire area on Google Play that consists of only watch faces, analog, digital, and all sorts of creative um, inventions that people have come up with. Uh, here's just a small selection of what they what they show on Google Play. So. Uh, until recently, uh, there was actually no uh, standard API um, that was actually only released with uh, with Lollipop. And uh, the the good news is, because all devices are running Lollipop, uh, you can yet now use it. And it's basically a, a OpenGL backed service which you can draw onto a canvas. And if you're familiar with canvases, that means that basically the world is open to you. You control whatever you like, whatever you please, and in whichever way you want. And uh, immediately delving into the code, um, it looks complicated. It totally isn't. Basically, what I've done here is I've extended a, a, canvas, weight, a can canvas watch face service. And it has uh, one primary uh, callback for the onCreate engine. And basically, I'm just saying, you know, I want to draw my own analog engine here. And this is a class I'll define in the next slide. So I'm basically providing an implementation of my watch face. So this engine then provides a number of different callbacks. So um, it, it, of course, it's relevant you know, to know when your watch face is opened up, if the user has selected your watch face, so you get an initialization step, which is, of course, an onCreate. Um, obtaining device properties. Some devices, uh, such as this one, have a, a special low-bit ambient mode. That, that is, because it has an OLED screen, you can make, a, you can make special use to only show um, pixels in, a, in primary colors and low-bit colors. It uses less power. So it's good to know these kinds of things because then you can draw your watch face in a very power efficient way. And power is really important when it comes to these things because this one lasts about a day and a half. So it's, it's another device you're going to have to recharge basically every night for the time being. So an, another callback you'll get is when that time actually changes. That means every tick, every second of the clock. It also means when your time zone has changed. It may also mean that your time on your device, on your host device, so your, uh, your, your phone or whatever, has synchronized. Um, entering and uh, exiting this ambient mode that I've been talking about. Um, the visibility changes, for instance, if you brought up a card in front, if you're interacting with another Wear app. Um, but most importantly, of course, actually doing the drawing of your watch face. And that looks something like this. So here I have my, uh, my Canvas watch face service dot engine, and uh, I've extended that. Um, and the, 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 the really important, I think, the, the basically where all of your logic is going to go is in the onDraw. Um, like I said, you have a canvas. You have the boundaries of your watch, watch face. And uh, draw away. I mean, you have a canvas to your disposal. You can draw, for instance, you can draw ticks uh, rotating the canvas, drawing all the ticks of the, uh, of the minutes, um, and draw an hour and a minute hand on there. You can do as you please. So this part is really your creative freedom. Um, and it's a fantastic API for that. So moving on, uh, let's talk about notifications. Um, I showed in the intro, I showed a, 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 an illustration of the Android, uh, uh, the Google Fit uh, notification here. Um, the really neat thing is actually that um, all of these notifications that use Notification Combat, and you should be using Notification Combat, of course, to be able to use, for instance, actions and big text and big picture in uh, Jelly Bean and later. Um, it basically just works out of the box. There's nothing really neat to do to make it make it work on Android Wear. Uh, if you have an app that uses this notification combat, you'll see the notification on your watch, with a few caveats. Um, these two in the, on the left, I'll get back to. But let's just take a look at the very far far left one. So basically, in your stream of cards, your title, description, and icon would all automatically show. And any actions that you have also provided into your notification combat will also show to the right of that. So you can, you can open the card, you can scroll horizontally, and you can get to your actions. And then you have those two reserved actions that are by Android Wear that provide the user facility to interact with the notification as you normally would do from the notification shade by tapping on a notification to actually open it, which then opens it on your phone, or to mute basically this application from showing any notifications on your uh, watch. 
So about those two other ones, um, you can also provide supplementary information if you, for instance, want to use a uh, a big a big text, for instance, you want to show the contents of an email or a lot of the content, maybe not all the content, but a lot of the content on the email um, inside uh, a supplementary page of your watch, uh, of your watch notification. That's possible using a page. Another example might be chat history, or in this case, um, and uh, Google Fit is showing me um, two details of the exercise that I've gotten. Um, the other example that uh, they also use in uh, Google Fit is something called a display intent. And I'm not going to spend too much attention on that because that is slightly more complicated. You can't do that just from your host application. You actually have to write a where app for that. But we'll, we'll get back to that. So let's, let's refresh our memories again. How, does, how, do make e how do you make a notification again? I can't remember exactly how to do that blindly. Um, with this notification uh, compat, you have a builder um, class. And just providing the context into that builder class, you can then proceed to with some really basic instructions to supply an icon, that title, and that text that I was talking about earlier. Um, here are just some strings. And these are, of course, um, uh, resources, drawable resources. And a content intent on the host device, so on the phone, what happens when you would open that from the notification shade. So you see a notification, you tap on it, and it, of course, brings up an application. So this is some sort of pending intent to opening an intent on your, on your phone. This is, of course, not everything. Of course, yet yeah, well, you've created a notification, you know, uh, actually have to show the notification. So we do that using the notification manager. Again, Compat, um, you obtain this service instance uh, from, the, uh, from the context, and you then continue to notify your constructed notifications. So we do on our notification builder build That gives us a notification, providing some ID. And presto, we have a notification. Very simple. What does it look like? Well. Very simple notification. So here I have my icon shows. Of course, this is the background. This is my watch face. Uh, the title display. Uh, the title displays here, and some some, some sort of text. And pulling it up, pulling the uh, pulling the card into uh, the big picture, so to speak. Um, you then get a slightly different display with a really ugly colored background, and that background is kind of guessed by the color of your icon. Uh, and it doesn't look that great. Maybe we can change that. Well, I hope so anyway. It's really ugly. So what about actions? I was talking about adding actions to your notifications earlier. Uh, again, in the classical way on Android, completely disconnected from Android Wear, uh, showing, a notification, uh, showing a notification with an, uh, an action here. I'm creating an action um, using the action builder class, um, providing an icon into it, some, uh, some action name. Again, a pending intent to what that action should actually do. Um, and then here at the bottom, I add this action to my notification builder. And uh, presto, we have, an, uh, we have an action in there. So what does this look like on Android Wear? Well, you scroll further to the right, and you have a action, just like I showed before. So this basically works. No coding on the Wear needed. It's just uh, as easy as that. Um, the, the, the pending intent that is launched, again, is a pending intent that is launched onto your host device. So it's not going to actually be launching anything specific on your watch. Um, it'll be la launching some sort of associated um, action, some sort of um, that pending intent on the host device. Which brings me kind of to what if you don't want that? What if you want to do something specific to the Android Wear device? You want to launch some action. Um, for instance, to to bring up uh, more details about your fitness progress, and you want to show that on the watch face. Um, well, that's possible. Uh, then you can create a, a special kind of notification that's just for wearables. And this is where we introduce a, a special object here that we call the wearable extender. It's in the uh, support package. Um, basically, just creating a new wearable extender. Providing that action that I was using earlier, just as a simple example, into the wear ex wearable extender. And back on our notification builder, we simply say, hey, extend using the wearable extender. And now that action will no longer show up on your host device, but it'll only show up on Android Wear. About that background, we had a really ugly background. Um, let's see if we can change that. Using this wearable extender, we can say, um, that we want a different background. And obtaining this background is a bitmap. And if you want to obtain it from a drawable, well, I've just used the basic the simple logic here to decode a resource. Um, not using any sort of bitmap disposing there, but uh, just give you the general impression of how that's done. Um, 
uh, this basically shows you uh, shows you this. So as soon as your card is brought up into focus, the uh, the background appears behind it, and it kind of uh, does a parallax effect as you scroll through the different actions behind it. So it's not pixel perfect onto the display, um, but it kind of moves along with the as you're ho scrolling horizontally through uh, through the actions and uh, different pages, for instance, of your notification. So. Another cool thing that you might want to do to enrich your notification is, for instance, um, to add voice reply. Now, when I'm talking about voice reply, um, I'd like to use an example, something along the lines of, for instance, composing an email. Um, maybe an email is a bad example, actually, because you're probably not going to be dictating an entire email into your watch. But if you're doing like a simple chat message, which I actually sometimes do, um, you don't want to have to take your phone out of your pocket just because you saw a notification come in that, you know, maybe my girlfriend says, hey, should we get a pizza or something like that? And I just want to respond to that saying, sure, or uh, yeah, whatever my preference is for pizza. And I don't want to have to grab my phone just to make that small interaction. And the easy thing to do then is, of course, a voice reply. So uh, what does that look like? We can provide a uh, remote input onto our action. So I, again, have another builder. That's a really nice thing. All of these things are just using builders. Uh, provide that into our action with some sort of extra that will come back into our um, application. Setting a label of what it should, s what sh it should instruct the user um, to do as, as voice input. So in this case, that would be uh, maybe dictating some sort of reply. Optionally, I can even set some preset choices. So if he's, uh, if he's not in the opportune moment to actually uh, speak into his phone, he can make a s selection through a list. Um, yeah, build that and add that into our, um, uh, add that once again, this action into our uh, uh, wearable extender. And um, we can read this out then from the application side simply by getting the, uh, the result from our intent, from the remote input. This is again from the support uh, library. And uh, if that result then contains the reply text, awesome. Then we can just show this as a message um, in, the, uh, in the chat. And the nifty thing about this pro approach, actually, these, these, these few lines of code right here, is that my application, that, that this activity where I would normally be doing a, a message composition, I don't have to change anything about that. I can just add this to the top of my OnCreate or something like that. and. Um, it, automatically it would automatically, for instance, if I were to pick up this message, um, it would fill that in as the preset message and maybe send it. So it would look like something like this. Here's my action again, the reply button. You tap on that, and it asks you, you know, uh, what do you want to do? Send a reply. So you can just start talking, um, or you can scroll. This is a pr one, of the, one of the choices that I filled in. And if you scroll to that one and you select it, then it um, it informs you basically that it's sending. It has a, a little indicator here that it's in the process of sending um, so that you can still say, oh, wait, that's not what I meant at all. Um, so, yeah. So, another way to enrich a notification for where is a page. Uh, that's what I was talking about, maybe showing some, some chat history or something like that, um, or, or contents of email, or um, a some sort of calendar event. Um, this is really adding that supplement information that you have a bit more, actually it's kind of interesting because you have more space on where than you have in the notification shade on Android. Because on the notification shade on Android, um, there's not any room to, 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 um, to navigate horizontally. So there's this basic principle on Android Wear that you have kind of a two-dimensional um, navigational structure where you can scroll horizontally to get, uh, sorry, scroll vertically to go to the different cards of different applications and scroll horizontally into that to get to a more, a more details, seeing more supplement information, for instance. So how would we go ahead and create one of those pages? It would look something like this. Um, again, we have a, a builder. I want to point out, so before I, before I go into detail about how this is constructed, we're adding a page. And this page is of the type notification. Now, that's kind of weird. You'd think it would be something like a page object or so, but it isn't. And when you think about it, it kind of makes sense because basically you're showing multiple notifications. A page is basically just another notification that's associated with your same application um, as a horizontal navigation into seeing more supplement information. So you can simply create a, a notification here. And I've made good use of the big text style here to show my chat history. And just basically building this notification, pushing it into the wearable extender by adding that page. And it'll look something like this. So you can scroll here, uh, scroll here vertically, and you can see the, uh, uh, the, the entire message. So 
that pretty much concludes the part about notifications. There is something more to be done with notifications, but it kind of gets into this um, into a, a bit of a close relationship with actual an Android Wear app. And uh, so far, we haven't been talking about actually building for Android Wear at all. We've basically been um, uh, tinkering on our existing uh, mobile app to add Wear features that basically just automatically work. But there's actually more to that, because what you can do on Android Wear is you can actually install an application. Um, and that would just basically look something like this. You just create the, uh, you would just, in Android Studio, you would just uh, enable the Wear module and basically click through the different settings of the wizard. And um, at some point, you have a, a Wear um, display showing the, uh, the square and the round watch faces. And you already have an app, basically. So it's not even a line of code, just clicking your app together. Um, which is nice. But what I wanted to say about this is that um, the, the Wear app that you then would compile, which is basically an APK, because it is Android after all, um, is actually installed on the wearable. Um, but it's bundled inside the mobile's APK. So when you're, for instance, thinking of uh, Google Fit, it would create a mobile APK. And it would then inject, basically, inside the res raw folder, the Android Wear APK to, sh to basically, in when your application is installed, um, the Android Wear Companion app would then inspect that, the, OK, there is a, a APK inside here that has to go on Wear and then proceed to install that. So you don't have to take any special steps in getting it installed. You the user, as from his experience, would simply install your app, and it would appear as pure magic onto his watch face some amount of time later, because, of course, it has to transmit binary data over Bluetooth, which, as Hugo probably knows everything about, is not extremely fast. <laughs> um, OK, so a little bit about what's happening under the hood when you're creating this new project. There's not a lot going on. Um, it's creating, of course, uh, separate modules, a, a mobile and a wear module. Um, but what it is doing is two important things. In your mobile's build.gradle, it's adding a special line saying, hey, there's a Wear app in my project, and it's located there, which is very important because otherwise it won't work. In your Wear's manifest, you also have to add a special uses feature that it's a uh, watch, uh, that is using the feature watch. And uh, one step that's easy to overlook that's not extremely well doc documented is this. The only way to actually package your application that it includes the Wear APK as well is by setting them both onto release mode. At least I haven't found any other way. So if you do know a way, I'd be very keen on hearing that. <laughs> so um, there are a few other caveats about exactly under which preconditions a Wear app is um, accepted. You, for instance, cannot just throw in all sorts of permissions inside your Wear app that are not also registered in your mobile's app. So basically, the mobile app's permissions have to mirror those of the Wear app. Of course, as a security mechanism, um, that is, uh, that's the, the underlying justification. So this is kind of a little bit vague. So just to kind of get something more of a concrete picture of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Wear apps, I'm talking about actually apps on your Wear device that give you something more than just interacting with notifications. For instance, uh, Google Play Music gives you a, uh, a, a more, more detailed control to actually interact with the music that you're playing with. Uh, for instance, in this case, I believe you can also swipe to the left and you can get a, uh, a selection of other tracks that are in your playlist. Um, Google Keep here um, uh, lets you, if you're, for instance, walking around in the supermarket, I find this extremely useful, just checking off the things on your checklist without having to manage with a grocery basket the item that you're trying to and holding your phone at the same time. Um, and of course, the example that I've been using throughout is Android, uh, Android's Google Fit. Going back to what I was talking about a little earlier, I'm going to take a quick look if I have enough time. Yes, I do. Display intents. So how do we show one of these more detailed um, notifications? So this is basically what you would think of as a page, but there's a lot going on here. This, you can't just construct this using a normal, um, the normal builders for, uh, for, for notifications. So you have to be doing something special here. And then we are. Right? We call that special thing. We call those display intents. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to create a, um, a, a notification. But in this time, we're not going to be doing it from the host device. We're going to be creating it from Android Wear. So of course, that's possible. Again, it's just Android. So you can write your application logic by creating a notification like we've been doing all this time. But now the application 
on where is taking the responsibility to create the notification itself. And now you can do a few new things, for instance, showing this display intent. And um, basically what a display intent does is it references an activity where you have, of course, some sort of layout defined and allows you to display it inside either a card in different sizes or as the last option here, full screen, uh, implies, of course, full screen, which is uh, what we saw here. This is a full screen notification. And uh, that works something like this. So again, with a wearable extender, we can specify what uh, size uh, we want our notification to be. In this case, I'm using the full size. Um, and I continue here to create a display intent, which is a pending intent to an activity. And this pending intent uh, references this intent to my full screen activity class. And um, one big caveat here is a uh, is how you define that activity. So I was mentioning the full screen activity. Um, make sure that is it exported, that it is uh, that allows to be embedded, and that it has no task affinity. Um, that's a little bit of a uh, a bit of a, 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 a sneaky sneaky bug there that it was uh, in my application. I didn't find exactly why it wasn't displaying my display intent the way I expected it to. This was the cause of that. So. So we talked about all sorts of different things. We talked about where watch faces, notifications, actual you know full scale uh, wear apps. There's also other things you can do. This is a funny one right here. You actually run Windows 95 on it. I'm not kidding. It actually works. You hear? You see the guy? Uh, of course, I don't intend to, for you to do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, what I do want to talk about uh, briefly is how you can go ahead and debug your device. As a developer, debugging is um, imperative to the process, right? Um, it is a little bit different, and it's a little bit uh, tricky. Um, if you have a watch like this one, and this watch actually has on the back, it has some pins that I can attach a USB connector to, which is also how it charges, incidentally. Um, if I attach this to my computer, then basically it's direct, di directly connected via USB. And that means that also ADB works. So if I enable ADB debugging on my watch, um, uh, I'm essentially good to go, except that I still have to uh, approve my RSA signature, which interestingly enough does not display on the watch, doesn't display on my computer, but it displays on your phone. So you get a, um, here's the hint that it's from your, uh, from your watch. Similarly, if you have a device such as the uh, Moto 360 that doesn't have any sort of uh, physical connector to, uh, to USB, uh, you can do debugging over um, Bluetooth. And I'm not going to read out these ADB commands, but basically you're forwarding the Bluetooth connection onto your local machine. And you get it right simply. You get the same RSA pop-up, and uh, you're good to go. I just want to mention a few tips um, in closing. Um, some. Sometimes what I do is I'm exchanging data, for instance, between my host device and my wearer device. And I want to, for instance, uh, exchange data using a bundle or something of the sorts. So I have a, um, a constant, and that constant is defined separately in each, in each module, which is not really the best approach, because if you do some sort of refactoring, then, you know, of course, something's going to change, and your app will break. And so the easy way to avoid that is really um, using some sort of shared module. And uh, that's, that's basically what I've done. I just created a constants class with some, uh, some, some constants in there. Um, there's one other thing, uh, taking special consideration for round devices, uh, especially if you're like me and you only have one device and it's a square device, then everything seems to perfectly fit, uh, which is really nice uh, and it looks beautiful. And then you get feedback from people with Moto 360s or uh, other round devices such as the LG G Watch R. Uh, saying, uh, hey, there are areas that I can't reach. Um, so yeah, definitely take that into consideration. You can run an emulator running around watch face, um, and uh, you should definitely test that. Another thing to take special consideration is almost round devices. <laughs> the Moto 360 has something that they like to call the flat tire. <laughs> um, there's a little bit missing in the bottom. It's not usually a problem, but in the, space, in the, in the case of making a watch face, um, it does have a restricted boundary. So drawing onto your canvas, your, your boundaries of, your, um, of, the, the, of where you're drawing in your on draw is actually not square all of a sudden. That's really interesting. Um, a few gotchas. There are plenty of gotchas. How many times I've been trying to run an app and it just wouldn't want, it just does not appear on my watch is um, uh, more often than I'd like to admit. Um, there are several cases in which your app just won't install on your uh, Wear device. That is, um, uh, if you're 
wearable module isn't correctly um, declared in the handheld app. So again, about this uh, build.gradle, make sure that it's properly declared. Uh, make sure that both applications have the same package and version numbers. It sounds super obvious, but sometimes you just want to bump the version of your um, mobile app. And uh, Android Wear is like, oh, hey, nothing changed on the uh, watch face on, the, on, the, on Android Wear, so I won't uh, upload a new version there. So make sure that those are always in line with each other. And uh, make sure that, what I was talking about earlier, make sure that your permissions on your watch are, uh, are included inside your mobile's permissions. So for instance, if you want to vibrate on your watch, of course, you need a vibrate permission. Make sure that you also include that permission in your, um, in your mo mobile manifest, even if your mobile doesn't actually make use of uh, vibrate, because again, otherwise it won't install. Uh, that makes, of course, sense because otherwise there's no there's no mechanism on the device to uh, agree to the permissions. So if the permission isn't declared in the host app, then there's no way to know that the user agrees with the vibrating app. Not that he can disagree because either he installs it or he doesn't, right? And again, uh, that uh, reminder about uh, using the, res the release version, otherwise it's not packaged. Uh, a few more. Um, there's a, there's a, there are some build processes, uh, continued integration tools that do asset compression on everything in your REST directory. Makes sense, for instance, if you're trying to throw, save, shave off a little uh, few bytes on your uh, PNG files. Um, but make sure it's not doing anything on the res raw um, because uh, it could actually corrupt your APK, uh, your aware APK in there. And it doesn't make any sense anyway. It's already compressed. It's already zipped. So. Uh, don't bother, just leave it be. It's called raw anyway, so you shouldn't be doing anything about it. Um, if you have any other sort of installation problems, Google recommends taking a look at the package update service tag. I can't say that I ever saw anything in there, but um, it's, uh, it's a poorly documented uh, message from Google. So um, finally, just a few mentions of uh, some useful things. Uh, there's a great training article on uh, getting your app ready for Android Wear and your first steps towards actually making a Wear app. Uh, there's also a, a, a really, really fantastic design guide, basically with these justifications of these of this creative vision that Google had and how that's really translated into how it is now. Um, definitely take a look. And if you're more of a um, not reading so much but listening more, the, the YouTube channel is fantastic. It has some really great um, dev bites um, uh, and, and other, uh, other videos from uh, developers on how to implement this kind of thing. One last thing before I finish, um, added value. Uh, the Google Play Store has two s distinct categories for uh, apps that, uh, that do something with Wear. Of course, watch faces being one, uh, it makes it easy for users to find new watch faces. Of course, there's you know, demand for that. If you have a watch, you want to have something pretty showing on your watch face. Uh, but also apps that have special um, uh, Wear integration. Uh, notifications, um, maybe more. A great example of that is the uh, Duolingo app. Uh, Duolingo is a app, I'm not sure if you know it, it's a website and an app to learn languages, and they have a really great integration for Wear that shows you flashcards. So if you're just walking down the street, maybe walking, waiting at the bus stop or something like that, you can do a few quick flashcards and polish up your uh, refresh your memory uh, uh, on Portuguese, for instance. That pretty much wraps it up. Thanks. Thank you.